2012 Chevy Cruze air conditioning compressor. Show you what goes out on these if you have one. Uh, uh, generally, they have two different. Uh, well, most cars have one thing to control the Freon, which is basically this here is a clutch. And when the clutch engages, uh, the belt drives uh, the Freon and then enables it to run through the system. Uh, on these cars, they're kind of unique. They have two different things. So this one has the clutch that turns on and it also has this Freon variable pressure switch, um, which these are problematic on European cars and also on the Chevy Cruze. So if you're wondering what it might be that's wrong, what you do is normally is you would test it. You can use one of these regular like Freon installation kits and hook it onto your low side where you normally add Freon. And you can watch the gauge as soon as you start the engine and the clutch engages. Uh, this should go from the red or somewhere over here and it should just go down to somewhere in the green uh, or even into the low it might show low freon but it should move the needle should come down as you start the engine when this valve goes out what happens is the variable pressure switch doesn't work it will just stay up in the red or wherever it is it won't move uh, so your gauge won't start to go down uh, and have your low side with no low pressure and your high side with high pressure. And I believe on this car uh, that it's that the fans won't run until the pressure drops to the proper place. So um, the high side probably or the low side has a switch that tells the computer to turn the fans on. So it's a little bit more complicated than your regular one because these are a 1.4 engine and it's the uh, high efficiency, so they're trying to get great gas mileage out of it. So they're, you know, they have a lot of little efficiency issues, and this is one of them. A couple of options you can do if yours is bad, if you've tested it and you realize that the gauge is not moving when you start the engine and the clutch is engaging, and you don't have any leaks, of course. Uh, if you have leaks, then that'll make it do something similar. Um, what well, a couple things you need to do is you can do is you can replace the whole compressor, which I got this off of eBay. I don't know. It says it's a AC Delco. Is it really? I don't know. But uh, or you can replace this valve right here, and this valve comes out with a snap ring. Of course, you need to evacuate the Freon and recover it. So you'd want to take it to a shop and have them recover it. Or you can buy a recovery machine. I'll put a link in the description for that. Uh, they're not too expensive. They are kind of, but not too expensive. But you can have a Freon recovery system. Recover all your Freon out. Make sure it's completely out of Freon. Because if you take this out without the Freon being removed, you could get burned or something like that by the hot oil that's in there. So make sure that you, you know, use your, do, this, do this at your own risk and be very careful when this valve comes out sometimes there's some pressure in there even if you think all the freons out and if that if fluids hot it can burn you and it won't be fun so you take the snap ring out right here and you pull this whole valve out you would take this and look at it and then compare it to a new valve the new valves are available on rkx website they also sell them on amazon I don't know what the valve looks like for this one um, so uh, that's why I bought the whole compressor I just didn't want to take it out and have it sitting there apart for several days so I just ordered the compressor it's a little more expensive to do this way but it's really not too hard of a job so anyway we'll get started first thing we need to do is remove this thing there's a bunch of eight millimeter bolts and some of these little clip plastic clip things you just pull this thing out Let's take those off so to do this you will need a star socket one of these uh, I don't know what size that is they have a set of these at Harbor Freight or Amazon maybe I'll look some up put them in the description for you 
E, what is that, 6? Six? 16? I don't know. One of these. So to get the belt off, it's right here. On this pulley, you turn it clockwise. It takes a lot of energy to do. I couldn't do it with you guys watching at the same time. So you just turn that clockwise. And then it, it loosens the tensioner right at where the pulley is. I'll see right there. From the top, I'm just down below. So I did ahead of you guys a little bit. So now I need to unplug. There's two plugs to unplug. You got one here um, and then one over here. And they both got to come off. And then we got three bolts and the coolant lines. And it's out. Really not much to it. Okay, so it's a little hard to film getting the bolts loose. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, I, I used a uh, electric ratchet. Really good thing to have for this job. So, a couple things you need to convert back over to the other one. Make sure that you uh, transfer all your stuff over while it's out. Like this one here didn't have this bracket. So I need to put it on here. Huh, it's a little different, isn't it? May not be able to use that. Actually, it doesn't have that casting on there. So I can't use that. But this little... I think this thing I do need to use. This uh, extension. So I'll probably just have to uh, supplement that with the zip tie, it looks like to me. So this is a little bit different wire connector. Huh. Actually... It gets it eliminates this little thing here, so the new one eliminates this. I was just looking at the wiring. The plug here is the same as that one. One of the reasons I didn't want to take this one off, the one that's in there, is because this plug was a difficult thing to get to, and then you have to take that the, the snap ring off and get it out of there. It's a little tough to get in there with, and those snap rings are always a little bit of a pain. That's why I just decided just to replace the whole compressor. So anyway, took these three bolts out. Once it drops down, then you can get to this one, no problem. So it's easier to just loosen all three of those. And it took a 13 millimeter, I think for all three, all four of those, these three, and the top one was a 13. And you just reach in there with, the, with this ratchet and it's a lot easier on your knuckles. If you get one of these at Harbor Freight, 100 bucks, something that's like that, it's not worth it. It's really worth it, so. Um, anyway, it looks like everything's com uh, converted over. Now, the thing is, now, um, either you add your oil that you're supposed to add now, check the, you have to check, look online, find another place that has the oil charge for it, because I don't know how much it is. Or you can do it when you put the Freon in, use an oil charge if you need to. Um, check in your instructions in your compressor and see if the instructions show that it has oil in it already because sometimes they do sometimes they don't so you need to know that and then uh, reverse procedure it just goes right back in um, fill it you know what I do is I'll, I'll show you a little bit later in the video I use a, a vacuum powered vacuum pump to bring it down to a vacuum and then put Freon in that way so anyway we'll get her back in and I'll probably catch you guys a little bit later in the video because I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and bolt this back in. So what I have to do is get it back up in there, put this bolt in in advance because once this is connected, the bolt won't come out all the, all the way out. You'll know how that works when you get it out. And then put this back on from the top and then uh, go ahead and put that back on there and we're good to go. All right, guys. So one of the things I do is I use the gauges here for the AC and if you notice I have it at a vacuum now I used this thing here you can get one of these at Harbor Freight and what you do is you hook this up and it sucks air makes it suck and then you open up these valves while they're connected here and it'll bring it down to a vacuum you can see right now it's at 30 inches of vacuum I'll let it suck for 10 or 15 minutes Okay, and just sit there and it'll take all the impurities out of the system. That's what you want to make sure on air conditioning. Uh, another thing that was made a whole lot easier is I take this hose off. This just comes off right here. 
and then took off this clamp right here and took this whole hose out of the way and you can grab onto this air cleaner and just lift it out of there and flip it upside down you can leave this plugged in just flip it upside down and then you can reach your hands in from the top to do some of it so other than that it really wasn't hard it's a little i'd say it's about a four out of ten let's hook it up and uh feel the cold air well, i'll feel the cold air i'll tell you what it feels like all right so if you notice uh the fan turns on when the uh variating pressure switch or when it reaches a certain temperature or pressure on the high side so you can see that now before i had like it was always up in the red it would never move the needle wouldn't move now it's into the green when you start the engine so when i shut the engine off and i wait about 10 minutes it'll go back into the red when you start the engine up it should come back down into the green and if that's the problem more than likely it's your uh compressor or the uh variating pressure valve um so anyway it's working great ac's cold uh i just gotta get this thing off uh, it's on there so once i get that off then i'm done and put my belly pant back on so anyway we're looking good ac's working again not a hard job i'd say like it's about a four out of ten uh, might be something you could attempt to do yourself if you're comfortable with Freon. Have it evacuated before you start. You know, if it's necessary to do so where you live. I don't know where you're, you could be anywhere in the world, I don't know. But if you're in the U.S., it's required to use an evacuation machine and recover the Freon. So make sure you do it right. Talk to you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.